Alright, so in this video, we're going to focus on entropy changes in chemical reactions, specifically how to calculate delta S and the entropy change in a specific chemical reaction. So as I said before, entropy is a state function. And so since entropy is a state function, we are only concerned with the initial and the final states of the reaction, which means we're concerned with the reactants and the products. And calculating entropy can be calculated in a manner very similar to how we calculated delta H when we looked at enthalpy and calorimetry and thermochemistry before. So to find the change in entropy of a reaction, so the delta S reaction, you take the sum of the delta S of the products minus the sum of the delta S of reactants. And the N and the M are the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. And for each of the values of delta S, you're going to use the standard molar enthalpies, which have already been calculated and tabulated for you, and those are in Appendix C of your textbook. Um, the molar entropies in their standard state are known as the standard molar ent entropies and are denoted S0. So the circle at the top of each of these variables means that it is in the standard state. And the molar entropies are given in joules per mole per Kelvin. And moles are needed because entropy is an extensive property, and so it depends on the amount of the substance. So it's very important that you include joules per mole per Kelvin. So as we look at the standard molar entropies of different substances, it's important to know that the reference for entropy is zero Kelvin, so it's absolute zero. So the values for elements are not zero joules per mole per Kelvin at 298, unlike the enthalpies. So when we focused on delta H, when you had O2, that delta H was zero. However, because our reference is zero Kelvin, um, it's important to know that the elements are not zero for the entropy. Um, when we look at the standard molar enthalpies, it's important to know that in the standard state, it means that it's at 1 atm and 298 Kelvin. And when we look at these, these entropies, they increase with molar mass, and they also increase with the number of atoms in the formula. And you don't have to know the why for that. That's beyond the scope of what we're going to work with. But it is important to know that, that those trends do happen. Much like enthalpies for gases, um, entropy is the same. The entropy for gases are greater than liquids and solids. Um, and that's because they have more randomness. Think about the particle diagrams. They have more randomness, more freedom to move, and so those entropies are going to be higher. So we're going to take a look at example 5 in your notes, and it says to calculate delta S naught of the reaction for the following at 25 degrees Celsius. And you have the reaction that is 2... SO2 plus O2 yields 2SO3, and you have the standard entropy values from Appendix C of your book. So we have SO2, O2, and SO3. So it is important to remember how to calculate any standard value. So we have delta S naught of the reaction equals the sum of the coefficients times S naught of the products minus the sum times the coefficient times S naught of the react. So what this means is we are going to have the sum of the products. Okay, so the products is just sulfur trioxide, always multiplied by the coefficient. So we're going to have 2 times the entropy of SO3 minus the sum of the reactants. So we're going to have 2 times S naught of SO2 plus S of O2, right? Because oxygen doesn't have a coefficient. So this is what we have with just variables, and now we can plug in our values. So 2 times 256.2, which is SO3, minus 2 times 248.5 plus 205 from the oxygen. Okay, so add up your reactants first, subtract that and we find that delta S naught of the reaction is equal to negative 189.6 joules per Kelvin. And that's because the moles canceled out when we use the coefficient. So delta S naught of the reaction is negative 189.6 joules per Kelvin. And a negative sign tells us that we have a decrease in the entropy. Okay, so the order increased, right? Became more orderly. And that's because if you look at the reaction, we decreased the number of gas molecules. 
So that actually verifies what we calculated, right? It became more orderly because we have fewer gas molecules and our delta S is negative. So again, this shows the calculation that we just did, but this would be a type of question that you could see on a test or a quiz, right? Calculate delta S not for the reaction. You would be given these values that you would need to calculate it, but then you might be, be able to tell or you might have to tell what the sign of your delta S means. So here's another example. You can try this on your own and then fast forward and check your answer if you want, or you can follow along as I go through this. So this is to calculate delta S naught of the reaction for the following at 298 Kelvin. So we have 2H2 plus N2 yields 2NH3. So the first thing that you want to do is look up in Appendix C our standard molar enthalpies for each of our products and reactants. So we're going to find S0 for H2, we're going to find S0 for N2, we're going to find S0 for NH3. So after you look up the standard molar entropies, okay, which I found each of those in Appendix C and put them on here, um, it is important to note again that if you look at nitrogen at N2, your delta H is zero. Your enthalpy is zero. However, notice that's not the case for entropy. So what we're going to do now is take each of these and we're going to figure out using our equation. So remember delta S of reaction is equal to the sum of S naught products minus the sum of S naught reactants. So let's take our products first. Okay, we have just one product in this case. So we have two times the standard molar entropy of ammonia gas minus the sum. So two times S naught of H2 plus the standard molar entropy of nitrogen. So we can plug all of those values in. We get two times 192.5 and then 2 times 130.58 plus 191.5. So again, make sure you add up those reactants first, then subtract. And when you plug this into your calculator, you find negative 67.7 joules per Kelvin. Again, remember moles cancel because of using the coefficients. So we get negative 67.7 joules per Kelvin, which tells us again, your entropy is decreasing, which means you're becoming more ordered. So again, just to summarize, um, exothermic processes when delta H is negative are more likely to be spontaneous than endothermic processes, but that does not mean that endothermic processes are not spontaneous. Okay, so exothermic are more likely, but endothermic could happen. Um, think about different examples where you have an endothermic process, such as um, dissolving maybe a salt that absorbs heat, melting ice. Um, so there are endothermic processes that are spontaneous, but typically exothermic is more likely. And then processes that involve an increase in entropy, so delta S is greater than zero, those are more likely to be spontaneous than those showing a decrease. So again, if delta S is positive, it's more likely, and if delta H is negative, it's more likely to be spontaneous.